Hello, I'm going to help you get uh, started on Project 2 this week. Uh, before you get started on Project 2, um, you should come to the syllabus, and I'd like you all to review um, the cheating policy. I think, you know, this is a programming course, and maybe not everybody has a good idea of what is okay or what is not. Um, so uh, make sure you read this to make sure you're not doing anything that's bad. And then the flip of that is we spend a lot of time talking about appropriate ways to get help. So sometimes people um, don't do things that they might be allowed to do. Um, for example, uh, if you find code online, uh, you can actually use that uh, if you appropriately cite it. So please do read this carefully. I think it's important. Um, it's not a lot of legalese. I try to make it uh, relevant and interesting. So once you've read that, head over to the project, uh, which is over here under specifications, and head to P2. And uh, this one's going to be a little bit um, different than last time. Last time you created uh, one of these I, Pi, and B files from scratch. Uh, this time we're just going to give it to you to start with. So I'm going to left click on here. And uh, again, I'm going to download by right clicking raw. So I'll right click raw and save link as. Okay, and I want to go under uh, documents again, uh, CS301. I'm going to create a new folder called P2, where I'm going to save all my files for this. You see it's trying to automatically rename this up here. I don't want it to uh, put one in my name. I just want it to be main.ipynv. So I'm going to save that, which is good. And I'm going to head back here and I'm going to download this other file as well, the test.py. Right click on raw, save link as, and great, I see I'm already in the location where I want to be, so I'll save that. Okay, now what we're going to want to do is open up the P2 directory um, in two different terminal windows, uh, much like we did last time. So you can review the steps for that. Uh, I, I know roughly where they are, so I'm just going to go directly there. I'm going to head down to um, Finder and then go under uh, Applications and Utilities, and then we open up the terminal. And I'm actually just going to leave this pinned. I'm going to go to here and leave this pinned in my dock, right? So even when I close it, it'll still be there. Okay, I'm going to have this window open. And maybe I'll just have another one open right away too. I'm going to have both of these open. And one of these I'm going to use to, um, to be running Jupyter Notebook. Maybe that'll be this one. And this other one I may use to be running the tests. Okay, so where are my files? Uh, let me see where I am here. Uh, this is a place that's called my home uh, directory. And inside your home directory, you have a lot of uh, things usually, such as your desktop, um, your documents, your downloads. Now, I remember that I created that file that or that P2 folder under documents. So I'm going to head there. I head to documents. I'm going to do ls again. Uh, lots of stuff here. Um, one of the things that I have here is my CS301, which is where I'm doing all my work this semester. So CD CS301. I'm going to run ls again. Here's P2. So CD uh, P2. And then ls. Let me just clear this to make, make it so I can see more on ls. Great. So I have my notebook file that I downloaded and uh, my test file. Let me do a PWD here to see what location I'm at. So this is all where all my work is. I'm just going to copy this right now. And now in this other one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say CD, paste. And if you see here, I don't have any spaces here. So this would work um, just fine. It's one of the reasons that kind of experienced um, terminal users don't like putting spaces in their file names. If you, if you put a space, for example, here when you created that folder, uh, you would just put this whole thing in quotes. So I'm going to do that and do ls again. And I still have my files. Let me just run my test right now. I'm going to say python test.py. Um, actually, before I even do that, one of the things we need to do is make sure that uh, the version of Python you're running is, is uh, Python 3. So I can actually do that. I can say python dash dash version. And I can see, OK, good. I'm running Python 3. If you're on a Mac and you run this and it says to something, then maybe you have to run something like this. You have to run Python 3 uh, version. But my computer set up where I'm just going to run Python. And I'm going to then say test.py. 
right? So this is an interpreter. It's running this Python program. And this Python program is making sure that this notebook um, looks good before you hand it in, right? So I'm just going to have a few pieces here. I'm going to run this. This will take a moment. And I see here at the end, it, it checks a bunch of questions. There's 20 questions that it checks. And at the end, it prints this test summary. And I can see that my total score is 10%. Uh, why is it 10%? Uh, well, there's um, 20 tests, and two of those we already just did the work for you um, as examples. So you could literally hand in this file right now, having written no code, and still get 10% on this first project. So the, the goal here is that as you work on this, you return all of these error messages for the different tests and to pass, right? And when they all say pass, this will be 100%, and uh, you should probably turn in your work. Okay, so I'm going to be doing tests in here. And over here, I'm going to say Jupyter Notebook. And, and notice how I have my main.ipy and b and test.py files here because I, I cd'd to the directory where I had those saved before I ran Jupyter Notebook. So in the past, we would come up here and we would say new notebook. Uh, we're not going to do that this time. We're just going to click on this notebook that we've already downloaded before, which is main.i, pi, and b. Uh, so here I am. Uh, this starts off, it's talking about comments. A comment is anything that begins with this pound sign. Now uh, this is just a note to another programmer, and it's what we use to figure out what project you're working on. Um, so please update this, put your partner ID in, in your, your, your net, net ID and your partner's net ID. And then what you can see here is that we go through and we have uh, 20 questions. There's Q1, and it tells you a little bit about what that is, uh, Q2, so on and so forth. You go all the way down, and you have uh, 20 questions that correspond to uh, these 20 tests. So what you're going to do is you're going to go through each of these uh, cells and you're going to modify it um, to pass another test. So I can I can be in this one. I may hit shift enter, so I'm not going to do anything. I may run that. Um, what I want to do is I need to put something here um, that will solve this cell for me. So I, this one's, these two are very similar, right? This one's just asking what is one plus one. It's as simple as typing that expression in Python. This one asks, is asking what is 2 plus 2. So I'm going to say 2 plus 2. And now I'm going to make a common mistake to kind of show you what will happen if you do this. Uh, I did 2 plus 2. And let me even run that. So that's 4, right? Everything looks good here. But if I head back to the tests and run this again, I run the Python tests, and it, it, it still says 10%, which is frustrating, right? It says no outputs in that out cell, and I'm like, well, but there is an output there. The problem is that uh, I didn't save my work, right? So when I'm running the tests, I'm running the test on an old version. Uh, for me to run the test on the latest version, I have to go to File, and then do the Save and Checkpoint, okay? Now when I do that, I'm gonna come back to these tests again, and uh, run this, and, and this time, uh, sure enough, I get 15%, because I'm passing these first three tests. All right, so that first one is pretty easy, right? We did Q1 for you and Q3, and then, you know, I just showed you how to do Q2, uh, and a lot of these are very similar, right? I tried to give examples in here, um, uh, so, that, you know, this is still kind of early project in the semester. I don't want people to get stuck on a lot of things. Um, well, let, let me show you something else that you might run into. Uh, let's say that for this one, um, you know, not only did I type the wrong answer, but I, I typed a wrong answer uh, that will um, cause some sort of error. Uh, for example, if I divide 10 by 0, right, we, we know from high school math that dividing by 0 is a bad idea. Let me, let me save this now, and I'll show you what's going to happen. When we come back to these tests, right, this is bad. So when I run these tests, so the tests don't even finish running. If I handed in this work right now, uh, I would get uh, 0%, right? So always make sure that when you hand in, you're getting some points. Don't have a, a notebook that's like 90%. 
and then you add one more thing that break it breaks it, and all of a sudden you get a zero. Make sure that whatever you hand in, you know, is good at some subset of the problems. So let me stroll through these errors and see what's drawing on. So I see there's lots of output here, you know, from when the tests are first running. Uh, the most interesting uh, part here is I can see, well, what is the error? I have this uh, div division, uh, uh, zero division error. And I can also see where that happened. It's showing me that it was on this line right here um, in this cell. And uh, so let me actually head back and uh, try to debug this, right? So I know it's question four, no surprise. Um, I think this is a little bit messy, right? It's a little bit hard to debug this way. So whenever you see this problem, the first thing I will suggest you do is you come to here and you do kernel, uh, restart and run all. And yes, and we want to restart and run all. And then this is going to crash right here. And I think this makes it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Right, again, it's saying the same thing. I crashed on this line with a division by zero because I tried to divide 10 by zero. Um, now, if I have a lot of code in here, maybe it's a little bit harder to figure out where this happened in this cell. Uh, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll go to view and I'll click toggle line numbers. And in that case, I can see, oh, line three in this cell is a problem that I can see right here. Here is line three. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good start. Uh, just work through this and ask us questions or come to office hours. And uh, just be careful this time, right? We don't want uh, people uh, kind of copying solutions from each other. So we encourage you to uh, partner up with somebody and then you have somebody that you can communicate with uh, fully about the project. And of course, if you want to do it on your own, that's, that's your prerogative. Anyway, good luck and I, I hope you have fun with this. It's kind of a little bit more of a serious project than last time.